Welcome to the first ever episode of The Sweat Room. I am here, sitting here with my co-presenter, Nico Dagnum, do I say. And I'm sitting here with my co-presenter, Chris the Player. We have a great show for you today with plenty of this. Ow. This. And loads of this. <laughs> we also have a very special guest all the way from Germany. And by Germany, we mean Eddington Tower. Let's get the show started with a space athlon. Hello and welcome to Essex, where we are hosting a space athlon. We've been blessed with some very pleasant weather. The rain has cleared and I'm ready for some space hopper action. Forget about Monaco, forget about Silverstone. This is the race that everyone wants to win. And right now, I'm going to take you around with little Lulu, as his mum calls him, to show you the course. Let's go. Go, get, go mate, go. Right here, he's onto the slalom. You can see the pressure. He's building up, he's his worst enemy. Let's see him go. <laughs> he's slaloming about. You can tell, this is the hard part of the course. This is where handling comes into play. This is where skill really comes in to test you. And here's the final slalom post, and he's ready for the home straight. Look at him go. He's already seen lactic acid build up. In the race, this will be the big test. He's nearly at his pint of milk. We'll see how that goes. There's Nico Durzo standing with a pint of milk. Yeah. And that's how it's done. So, how long have you been hopping for? Ah, uh, three years now. Oh. I've won some major championships. This, uh, this is my beauty, I call it Green Beauty. Well, it looks like your competitors are in a lot of trouble then. Oh, they are. They're <laughs> world of trouble. It's intense. This could be a good race. Conditions good. M match the space hoppers. On your marks. Get set. Sorry, I don't like cheaters. Go. Oh, oh, he's gone for the... We got, we got, we got two winners. What's your what's name, mate? Gonzalo. Gonzalo, my friend, it's nice to meet a good champion like you. Thank you. Tom, well done, I know you're ready. Done. These two guys are through to the final. The space athlon is all about diversity. That's why we've got a tiger. He's definitely a tiger. Mount your space athlons, please. No cheating. On your marks. Get set. Go. As you can see, there's a lot of effort in the players. They really want to win. It's neck and neck. Oh! Win this. Oh. Oh, hey, come on. I think the winners are Ben and the Tiger. Your microphone's out of place. Do you fancy uh, sucking it in? And now a clip from fencing. Hello and welcome here to the fencing club at University of Essex. I'm Little Lulu because that's what my mum calls me. The producers asked me to make a fencing joke, but I say fencing jokes, what's the point? I'm here with David Giles, he's the, um, let's call him the, the Zorro of the University of Essex. So David Giles, what first got you into the uh, fencing? Well, I don't know, I just uh, saw it when I first came here two years ago, just saw it and uh, thought, oh that looks interesting, I'll give it a go and uh, haven't looked back since. So you've been doing it two years, you get poked, prodded, whacked a lot? Oh yes, every Her week. Um, sometimes. 
Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. So um, the, I think the question all our viewers want to know though is who would win in a fight between you and Darth Vader? <laughs> Probably Darth Vader because I don't use a lightsaber. Ah, see that's cheating a bit, isn't it? You don't consider yourself quite the Jedi yet. No. No. So what do you consider your greatest fencing achievement? Well, so far this year we've done, we've got a really good record. We've, uh, we, uh, the men's team lost their first match today. Um, up until this point they're unbeaten, so it's... Good, it's a good record compared to previous years. So. It's good to hear. So I'm glad you've joined me here to get whacked, poked and whipped. And let's cross swords. So David, I've had an absolutely smacking time here, um, so if anyone on the university wants to get involved in fencing, how'd they go about it? Yeah. Well all you need to do is come along Wednesdays, 8 till 10, uh, in the sports hall, uh, give it a go, we've got our professional coach. Brilliant, Brilliant. thank you for your time today. today. It's back to you in the studio, Little Lulu, better than Bruce. Don't worry, there is plenty more Little Lulu abuse to come. Fencing looked quite fun, didn't it Nico? Definitely, Chris. And if you wanted to give fencing a go, give David Jarmus David Giles an email, but hopefully it takes it easier on you than it did on little Lulu. Fencing is where you too can learn to handle a sword like my co-presenter here. Isn't that right, Nico? You don't usually complain. Moving swiftly on, we have our very special guest, who single-handedly <laughs> put Handball Society on the Essex map. Welcome, Pascal Lant! I see you, mate. I see you, mate. So, Pascal. How did you first get the idea to make a society? I played handball my whole life in Germany and I talked about, about it um, to some Norwegians and Swedish people and they were all excited so I thought why not? So is it big in Germany then? Yeah, it's the second most um, played sport in Germany um, after soccer. Uh, football son, we <laughs> put football around here alright? <laughs> well, spend a year playing handball in America so I say soccer. <laughs> So, um, well, why handball? Because Nico took the less professional view of that you enjoyed handling balls, but you know, <laughs> I wanted a real answer. Uh, we all enjoy handling balls. So. Some more than <laughs> others. Yeah, you know, stop it. Yeah. Okay. Well, how how did you raise funds for handball? Um, just uh, two weeks ago, we started um, doing chlamydia tests. For every chlamydia test, we got ten pounds, and we I found a few people who. Did it for me, so. Oh, who would who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so we know how big handball is in Germany. Um, how would you expect to bring that to Essex and uh, get the local interest up? Um, there are a lot of international students, um, like Eastern European or Scandinavian students, who played handball in their country. So I would start with those and then try to um, get English people um, involved. I think it's a really cool sport, so I'm pretty sure. They're going to play it too. Your email is at the bottom of the screen here. So if any of you guys are interested in getting involved with handball, which I think me and Chris are going to do, yeah, definitely. we might have to do a little feature on that, yeah. then give a drop an email. Also, if you want to chat to Pascal privately, I'm sure he'll be he'll oblige to that. As well, he's got a comedian test left over, so if you want to ch get yourself checked out afterwards, yeah. I think you need to do that. Yeah, Pascal, thanks for coming on, mate. You've been a really great guest. Thank I'm you. Glad, you have, glad to have you on the show. And uh, you do actually look like you have the muscles for our next feature that we're going to show. Guns of the Week! Welcome to the Essex Gym. We're on a quest to find the biggest guns in the Essex Armoury. It's been rumoured that Arnie himself has been working out here. Turns out it's just little Lulu. Let's go find those guns. What's your name and where are you from? I'm Scott and I'm from, uh, from Marlow. You look like you can be a contender for Guns of the Week. How long have you been working out for? Quite a while now. The Roy's help of course. A couple of weeks. Who's been your biggest inspiration? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Beat does, does this help with the ladies? Does this help with the ladies? 
Yeah, there's loads of them. Stat everywhere. The biggest question, who would win in a fight between Rambo and Terminator? It's going to have to be Terminator, isn't it? Ooh. Aren't it? Led. So, anyway, are you the hardest man in Essex? <laughs> of course. With these guns. See, that big guy over there, he disagrees with you, mate. Does he? Yeah. These guns aren't looking so good, I don't think. No. <laughs> the final thing, you kind of beat us to it, uh, but can we have a pose just for the camera? Back at the studio. Uh, what's your name and where do you come from? I'm in Tristan Stansbury and I live in Wivenhoe. Lovely, right, okay. You look like you're a contender for Guns of the Week. How long have you been working out for? For about 10 years at this gym. That's about right. Fantastic. You impressed with the gym? Yeah. Fantastic. Who's been your inspiration for those 10 years? Um, just got so fat and overweight that I decided I better do something about it because I'm not getting any younger. It's very admirable. Does your guns help with the ladies or? <laughs> Don't tell my wife that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like ladies. <laughs> Who would win in a fight between Rambo and Terminator? Uh, I think Terminator. Yeah, that's a fairly respectable choice, I think. Anyway, are you the hardest man in Essex? <laughs> no way. Well, you know, we, we, you're a slight disappointment there, Richard. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're I'll not our man by the looks of things, oh, no, but no. give us a pose. You'll have to, you'll have to keep looking. fight between Rambo and Terminator. Rambo. Thank Definitely. you. Thank you. I like that. That's a nice one. Someone else says Terminator. What's your name and where are you from? Uh, Benedicta, I'm from Norway. Oh, lovely, yeah. Uh, you look like in good shape. How long have you been working out for? Um, actually, a couple of years, yeah. I like to work. I just I take a run outside or something like that. Oh, so I li really like it here. So who's yeah. been your inspiration or what's been your inspiration to work out? Uh, when I began with the cheerleading, I noticed that I needed to work out. So therefore, yeah, it was an inspiration. Beautiful, beautiful. So who'd win in the fight? The Terminator or Rambo or you? <laughs> uh, Terminator. <laughs> so I guess you're not the hardest girl in Essex. Maybe. <laughs> one we'll one day, one day. Can you give us uh, a little, little, pose? little flex that? for the camera? Dance of the week. I'd say. We have a definite <laughs> contender. Thank you for your help. <laughs> you do. If you think you have the Guns of the Week, send your pics to the address at the bottom of the screen. Here at the Sweat Room, we like to encourage our own unique sports, don't we Chris? Don't know what you mean, Nico. Maybe this will refresh your memory. <laughs> On that note, let's watch the thrilling end to the space opera race. Let's see who won this prestigious international competition. This is the grand final of the Space Athlon. Are you boys ready for this? Mr Tiger, you won in pretty unorthodox circumstances. You know, what do you say about that? Wise words to the Tiger. Go for it, go, go, pretty funny start. Go now, go, go. Gonzalo, mate, coming over here. How'd you feel? Sick. <laughs> Got <laughs> all this milk. But surely, Superman like you don't feel any pain. No. <laughs> okay, fine. So, what are you going to do with your newfound fame? I don't know. 
Remember the name Gonzalo. You'll be hearing it everywhere. Usain Bolt, nothing compared to this man. This is a true achievement. This will be Gonzalo Day. Over and out. Back to the studio. As you can tell, there was an infringement during the final race as contact was made between two athletes. However, this was not seen by the official as she is a woman. What Chris obviously means is that she knew the rules but was just probably concentrating on the ironing. Um, Gonzalo, uh, we know you're watching this as probably everyone is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, well, we've got one final prize for you actually as lovely Nico here is presenting. It's yet another pint of milk. Well, thank you for watching the first episode of The Sweat Room. We hope you tune in again to see more of our naughty antics. But before we go, we'd like to leave you with a little more abuse of little Lulu, as, that what, as that's what his mum calls him. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Hello, welcome to the University of Essex Hockey Club with me, little Lulu, because that's what my mum calls me. Here with Nico, of course. So, are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be, sir. For, for you who don't know, we're going to stick little Lulu in goal against the Masters of the Hockey Club. So if anyone does want to get involved, how do they go about getting involved? Um, you could either just come to the Astro on a Tuesday. The men train from 6 to 8 and the women's from 8 till 10. Or you can email our president, Liam Reardon. And you find us on Facebook or on our website, UHC. This talent that we're watching now is Reevesy, our first team hockey goalkeeper. And this is what little Lulu's, as his mum calls him, is going to do. You might recognise Reevesy from Reevesy's Night Out. We don't, but you might be one of the five people that watch it. Yeah. I reckon I could take that. I reckon I could take it. It's easy. It's easy. Look, it's looking scary, mate. Look, look nah. how fast the ball. Do you reckon you can go and go? Yeah, Reevesy's got nothing on me, son. Reevesy's got nothing on me. So how was that, Reevesy? Yeah, it was alright. Yeah. Could have saved a few more, but... Uh, yeah, tough, tough. <laughs> it is pretty tough, Hurt. as you'll find out in a minute, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that's it, basically. The pads, uh -huh. they don't stop paying completely. It's right, it's che cheating, really, though, isn't it? Well, <laughs> so what tips would you give, then? Well, sorry? What tips would you give me? Tips would I give you? Um, stay on the front of your feet like that, heels off the ground, and uh, try and watch the player as well as the ball, see where they're going to hit it. Um, a couple of them, though, you won't be able to tell at all. So, um, and apart from that, just uh, pray. Ready? That's all I can do. Yeah, OK, so we'll get you padded up now, then. And, Sounds uh, good. Go on, you're there. Really I, believe you, I believe you. Come on. Come on, Reeves, you over here, mate. Uh, yeah, so. So, so what, what is that in your hand? This is the box, or the cup, whatever you want to call it. What is the aim of the box or the cup? To basically protect your nuts. Oh, As and he hasn't got that? He hasn't got that, I'm I'll afraid. You know, I forgot. It was my fault. You've not been really evil and told the lads to aim for the area, have you? I may have done so all oh, week. You're such, oh, you're such a bad boy. And with some of our best players being incredibly accurate, being able to hit a ball over 100 miles an hour, this could be interesting. 'll tell you what mate that was outstanding I heard someone <laughs> shout the David Seaman of hockey it was David Seaman 2002 World Cup bearing in mind Ooh, but still let's not go there, let's not go there. how did you find that mate good it's good it was a yeah, good experience bit, <laughs> bit daunting but yeah look there's one thing we didn't tell you and um, we thought it'd be best in the form of Reevesy to tell you this actually yeah you weren't wearing a box so if you'd been hitting the balls you would probably oh. stare at there goes your um, whole like fatherhood <laughs> so uh, yeah, you were lucky, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Not cool. I'm kind of glad it didn't happen, to be honest. I'm kind of glad like, it didn't We would have been well. calling an ambulance. Yeah. We didn't yeah. finish through, did we, lads? But, you know, you're all right. You're all right now, aren't you? Yeah. Took one to the head. Lucky, yeah. Took a couple, yeah. That last, <laughs> that last. Oh, yeah. Christ, you've got a bit of a yeah, bump here, there. Ah, this is first. Nice. One of the day's work, though, Oh, well done. Yeah, yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah. Very good. All right. Back to the studio.